Uh, so EIGRP configuration, um, the autonomous system number, the AS number, uh, can be 1 through 65, 535. This is the one that must match on all routers. The, uh, with OSPF, the priority uh, ID, the, it, it, um, or excuse me, process ID, it, that value didn't matter on OSPF. On the AS number for uh, EIGRP, it does have to match. So, uh, first of all, it's classless unless spec it's class full unless uh, specified as classless. So the configuration here would be, you know, router space EIGRP space and then your AS number. And again, must match on all routers. In this case, it's 101. Uh, jumps you into router configuration mode, and then you you put your networks in. And this is class full, so you don't need to worry about subnet masks or wildcard masks. Uh, it's just network and then each network uh, IP. If you want to do it as classless, the configuration is very similar to RIP. Um, first router space EIGRP space and then your AS number again must match on all routers. The no space auto dash summary, uh, just like that command makes uh, RIP version 2 uh, classless, it also makes EIGRP classless. So you're in a classless, so since you're your classless network, you need to advertise the subnet. In this case, since it's uh, routing protocols, you advertise the wildcard subnet because that's the way they want to do it. So uh, network, space, and then your, your network address, space, and then your wildcard subnet. Again, to get your wildcard subnet, take all 255s and subtract your actual subnet from it, and it's going to give you your wildcard. OK, if you want to uh, summarize routes at any particular interface, you jump into interface configuration mode by selecting the appropriate interface uh, and number. Uh, then you submit the IP space summary dash address space EIGRP space uh, and then whatever your, your IP and subnet is. In this case it's 192.168.4.0 and it's got a .254.0 so that's going to include 192.168.4.0 and 192.168.5.0 because of the subnet mask it's using. So you can summarize a set of addresses instead of having to have both of those individual routes floating around. Um, make sure you specify bandwidth on WAN links to ensure routes are calculated correctly. Um, the, uh, you, that's just with the bandwidth command on, on those. The reason is on serial interfaces, T1s, you might have a fractional T1 there. You're not getting your 1.544 megabits per second. But EIGRP, unless you specify the bandwidth, it always assumes every serial link is a full T1. So if you've got a T1 that's only 64 kilobits, you're going to want to specify with the bandwidth, you know, 64, that 64, that, 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 that is a, a 64 kilobit link. Otherwise, whenever it's calculating, it may pres presume that's the best route because it's got a higher bandwidth, when in fact it's not the best route because it doesn't have as much bandwidth as EIGRP is presuming it to have. Um, if you want to configure a, a router as a stub router, um, as, you know we talked about just a second ago, where it's only got a single link, it's going to be uh, from router configuration mode. So you know EIGRP the router EIGRP and then the AS number, and then EIGRP space stub. Uh, pretty straightforward. If you need to set a default network, uh, the specified subnet must already be in the routing table, um, but it's IP space default dash network uh, 192.168.1.0 in this case. And then uh, variance and unequal path load balancing. We, we mentioned this a minute ago that um, EIGRP actually has the ability to uh, load balance between paths that are are not equal. So um, first, it, you got to do this. You have to calculate it with a multiplier. Uh, that multiplier is the variance value. Um, so the unequal paths must be less than the composite metric of the best route multiplied by the variance. I'll talk about what it means. But first of all, configuration is you know jump into router EIGRP mode, and then it's just variance space, and then whatever you want the variance multiplier to be. So, like in this case, this network down here, we're coming from router A. We're trying to get to the 172 network. Uh, remember, lower values are preferred. So in this case, you've got uh, 20 plus 60, so 80 is your best uh, route to get over here, or best composited metric. If you were going to try to go this way, it would be 90 plus 10 plus 10, so 110. So it's not going to use this 110 link at all um, unless you configure variance. If you set a variance of 2, it's going to be 80 times 2 is 160. Since this 110 is less than 160, it will use this as a, an unequal uh, load balanced path. 
Um, if this value was 170 down here for some reason, it would no longer use it as a as a path. Um, if you wanted to set it higher, you set the variance to three. You know, it'd be 60 plus 20, 80 times three. So you know, 240 would be the maximum you could have to um, to have an unequal path. This makes a lot more sense if you've got a, a bigger network with a lot of uh, additional paths that it can take. Um, but that's basically how variance works. It's just a multiplier that you multiply the the best composite metric of the best route. If any other values are under that for other routes, it can load balance between them. And then for EIGRP troubleshooting, um, show IP protocols, uh, show IP route, again, incredibly important for all of your routing stuff. Uh, you know, show IP route or show IP route and then the, uh, the network IP to see um, where that particular IP is going. Uh, show IP EIGRP neighbors to see your neighbor table. Show IP EIGRP topology to see your topology table for EIGRP. And again, if you're getting down in the, the down and dirty, you can't figure something out, the debug command, debug space IP space EIGRP will help you out. And again, 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 make sure you turn your debugs off whenever you're done uh, because it, it takes up a lot of router resources. So make sure to undebug all. So that is the end of EIGRP and OSPF. Any questions on that stuff? Is, I, I mean, part of it, part of it is um, having read the chapters beforehand. Like I had to, I went through the CCMP with this stuff. I had to read the chapter and some of the paragraphs. I had like that stuff about you know uh, the advertised distance and the feasible distance. I had to reread a couple times, make sure I had it right in my head. So coming into class, if you haven't read those chapters yet, it, it probably is going to feel like it's it's going over a little bit. But once you once you've read through it. Um, yeah, well, I would get, when I, if I read the chapter before class, I'm lost in the chapter, but if I come through class first and read the chapter, I'm bored. Uh, okay, so okay. So, see, see it's, it's different people feel different ways. <coughs> I know, like, whenever I was um, studying, like, it would depend. Like, sometimes I would feel like I got the CBT Nuggets videos better if I had read the chapter before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would watch a CBT Nuggets video, kind of get bits and pieces, then read the chapter, then watch it again. And then I, I feel like I have a good grasp on it after it was all over. But yeah, like we're the stuff we're getting into now gets is a little bit tricky, um, and the the switching doesn't get a whole lot better in my opinion. Um, so it's it's kind of rough stuff. But we're um, I, I guess I already asked where everybody was on the um, the reading. So any other questions? Any actual questions? <coughs>